Hi, and welcome to another episode of Edge Animate Online Week by EdgeDocs.com. My name is Simon Vijaya, and in this episode, we will take a closer look at the Edge Commons feature for interactive SVG. I can recommend the Edge Commons episodes in case you have missed them. So today it's all about this little guy and one big feature, or should I say missing feature? But first things first. Today you are able to use SVG graphics in Animate already, but you are quite limited. So you can use an SVG as a static image tag, or you can use it as a um, CSS property, the background image for a div container. And that's great, but it's limited in that case, so you cannot really use it to um, create interactive SVGs. So it's not possible to reach into the SVG to change, for example, a shape or an outline, and it's not possible to listen for events that are fired by the SVG. But uh, of course, there's a solution. There are the Edge Commons, uh, the dirty little helpers, open source library for Edge Animate. Um, and they have a, a feature that enables SVG graphics um, to use it in an interactive way. So let's have a look at Illustrator first. So here is the guy. It's really a handcrafted character by a colleague of mine, um, Jackie Shepas. Um, and it's really not, uh, not that complicated. So we have several paths, of course, and we named three elements within this SVG. So we have the cap, and uh, down here we have the pants and the shirt. So let's move over to the final composition. So we want to build something like this, some kind of virtual dressing room for this little guy. So we want to be able to click on these um, items within the SVG, and we want to be able to change the color. So for example, we can give this little guy some kind of emergency room look. And of, uh, of course, this is just one SVG, so there's no um, slicing at all involved and we don't use any PNGs. So for example, we can zoom in. So let's have a look at the interaction diagram. So what we want to do is we want to enable these three elements within the SVG, the pants, the shirt and the cap, to act like hotspots. And whenever the user clicks on one of these hotspots, two things should happen. First, the selected part should be um, displayed in a text field. And it's the second thing is, we want to save the selected part in a variable. So we can use this variable in the final step, for example, when the user clicks on the color field, for example, on this blue circle. Whenever the user clicks on the circle, um, the selected part that is saved in the variable should change the color accordingly. So here once again is the final result. Of course we have to, we have several um, possibilities. We can do everything in Edge Animate and we can code all the interaction stuff um, with JavaScript, but uh, I have another thing prepared which I think is pretty cool because it is possible to do some little coding in Adobe Illustrator. That sounds weird, but actually it really makes sense. So just let me show what I'm talking of. So we want to be able to make these hotspots clickable. So we have this little panel called SVG Interactivity, which can be opened um, somewhere in the window um, menu. There's a menu item SVG interactivity. So that opens this uh, small panel. So what we can do now, we can select um, different parts of this uh, SVG graphic. For example, we want to focus on the, uh, the cap first. So we are now able to register event handlers. So this is really similar to Edge Animate, for example. So we have some events just like click on mouse over and all that stuff. And we can enter some code for this event handler. We want to fire uh, an event whenever this on-click event occurs. So we want to, um, to bubble this event up to the Edge Animate composition to, to um, write some actions for this uh, event. To handle, for example, the, the variable uh, of the selected part and of course the, the display of the selected part. And right now it's not possible to create, uh, to fire a custom event in a single line. So you just have one single line uh, of code you can enter right here. So it's possible to load external JavaScript files. So in this case, 
we embed a pretty simple file which is part of the edge commons uh, distribution as well so it's just called svg.js and as you already can see right here it's really tiny so we apply this and uh, we can move over to edge code or brackets in this case to see what's in this script so it's actually not much so we have a function called notify with two parameters a reference and a type and uh, actually this script does not do anything more than just fire or create a new custom event and then fire or dispatch this event to to send it to um, the parent container so yeah that's it so we have this script loaded and we um, attached some scripts for the on click events of the three character elements so we can use for each um, event just notify then pass in a reference to this and say it's uh, a custom event called select so yeah that's everything we have to to do in advance uh, before we can start using this SVG uh, graphic in an interactive way in Adobe Edge Animate I have prepared a file which we can use as a starter so here we are it's, there's nothing really uh, going on on the stage right now we have a speech bubble we have a, a selected part a txt file which of course um, has a name selected part txt as well so we can use it in a script uh, later on and we have created the or actually just placed the svg uh, graphic we just built in adobe illustrator and uh, this little guy uh, is named character so um, again, we can use this name uh, in the next step. So let's have a look what we have so far in the composition ready event of the stage. So in this case, we have uh, a yep nope script that loads the external uh, edge comments extensions. Yep nope is uh, pre built or is actually built in Adobe Edge Animate, so you don't have to worry um, about this little function. And what we can do with it, we can simply pass in a uh, URL to a, a local or um, uh, to a remote JavaScript file. In this case, we simply use the CDN version of edgecommons.org. The website is cdn.edgecommons.org. Uh, and here you get uh, some information how to actually use these libraries. You have some uh, snippets you can just copy and paste. And uh, down here you find all the versions. Right now it's version 1.0 and you can see for example, in this case, we can use the all-in-one package. This is the, the URL um, which we want to use in our Edge Animate composition, just like this. And whenever this script is loaded completely, we can use the complete function to actually trigger some more code. And uh, of course, we just loaded the Edge Commons, so it's really safe to use the Edge Commons within this complete function. And uh, line 7 is actually where all the magic really happens. So here we use the ec.svg access svg function, which simply converts the svg as an interactive svg. So now within this function, actually when this is done, we can use um, the svg document reference, we get passed in into this function, to have access to the svg and to all the uh, powerful features. So let's have a look what we can uh, do with that. So first we want to um, add a, in, an event listener. So we simply can use the SVG document reference to add an event listener, just like this. And we want to listen for the select event and we can write a function that gets uh, called whenever the select uh, event gets dispatched. So now we can use this uh, event object we get passed in here to simply remember um, the selected part. And we can use the animate function sim.set variable. And so uh, now we can give the variable a name. So we want to save it uh, with the name selected part. And the value should be event dot target which is actually this the shape within the svg graphic um, that dispatches the event so for example the shirt 
or the cap. And the next thing we want to do is we want to show the ID of the selected part. And we can use um, the jQuery function of animate to get a reference to the selected part txt, which is the text field we just placed on the stage. Um, and since it is a um, jQuery reference, we can of course use the HTML function to inject some HTML code. So in this case, we don't want to inject a string, but we want to inject the target ID. So that's actually the name of the layer in Illustrator, for example, shirt. So we now are safe to run this in the browser. And now we see actually the same uh, as we would expect um, without edge comments, but now we are able to actually reach into this SVG. So we see um, on the right hand side which part of the character is selected. So that's the first part. So the second part is we want to um, use this variable, which is a reference to the selected part, to change this element. So for example, we can build this really simple UI. We can, for example, place a, a circle uh, that can be used as a button, just like this. And we can change the color, for example, to something green. And we don't even have to give it a name because this is uh, really cool because we are doing it loosely coupled. So we can simply say, we want to see the actions for this circle. And we want to use the click event handler, of course, because the color should change whenever the user clicks on the circle. So now we can um, get a reference to the selected part. And we simply can say, save that into an, uh, a variable, selected part, and that gets the value um, sim.get variable. And we save the selected part in the variable called selected part. So actually this is a variable in the scope of the symbol, in this case of the stage, and this is just the local representation, so a local variable. And in the next step we can say set the color. So now we need a script that actually reaches into the SVG to change the color of this uh, of the selected shape. So now we can uh, use the global jQuery selector to um, get a reference to the selected part. So if you remember, this is a reference to an actual element in the SVG, so we now get a jQuery reference to exactly this element in the um, document of the SVG. So now we can use uh, a CSS function, and in this, this case, since now we are in, a, in an SVG scope, we can use the fill property, which uh, can change the color of a shape. So now we can use um, um, the color. So we actually want to get the color of the, the button. So in this case, uh, the green circle. So now we can use the uh, E variable, which is actually the a reference to the event. And you can see it right here. We get passed uh, in this reference uh, to this element. So now we can use e.currentTarget, which is actually a reference to the, to the circle right now. And we can read uh, a CSS property by just using one parameter with the CSS function. So in this case, we want to use the background color um, of our shapes. So what we did now is we, whenever the user clicks on the circle, we read the reference to the selected part, and then we use this reference to actually reach into the SVG and change the CSS property of the element and apply the value, which is the CSS value of the background color of the circle. So when we run it in the browser again, we now can again select one of the items, and now we can simply use this button to change the color. 
And the great thing about that is that we now can simply duplicate this circle. So in this case we have now three circles and we can simply change the color of the second circle to something red and the third button should get something blue so we can run it in the browser again. And now we can change the color to all the um, available colors in the circle. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? So now you can imagine, you can build all kind of cool stuff in Adobe Illustrator. So you can really be creative and you don't have to, to think differently. So you really, really can use all the uh, SVG stuff in Illustrator. You can simply save it as an SVG file and you already can implement some events in the creative process in Illustrator and simply pass that to the interaction designer who uses um, Edge Animate to simply listen for these events and uh, to trigger um, some, some more functionality. So I really love that feature and I'm really looking forward to what you guys out there are going to build with it.